All right, in this video example, we're going to walk you through uh, the construction of a sources and uses of fund statement, which is a variation of the cash flow statement. Uh, when, when corporations, uh, publicly traded corporations, fill out their 10K form and include a cash flow statement, they're actually using in internal company records to, to produce all that. If you're not publicly traded or, or you're fairly small, the sources and uses of funds approach is a way of measuring or estimating the same elements that go into a cash flow statement. And like the cash flow statement, it has three areas, cash flow from operating activities, cash flow from investing activities, and cash flow from financing activities. The purpose is to explain what happened to the checking account. At the end of 2016, this firm, ABC Industries, had $1.284 million. I'm dropping the trailing three zeros. So they had $1,284,000, and at the end of 2017, they have $1,643,000. Looking at a cash flow statement, we'd get a better idea of where the money came from and where the money went to. And so what we can see is they have more cash now than they had at, at the end of 2016. So at the end of 2017, we can see that total assets have gone up roughly $800,000, uh, and the cash has gone up actually not quite that much. So assets have gone up in places and down in places. Liabilities have gone up in places and down in places. And we want to pay attention to where the money came from and how they raised money and what they spent the money on. All right, so that's the sources and uses of fund statement, poor man's cash flow statement. What we need is a comparative balance sheet which shows the end of year numbers for the prior year. And then what we'll be looking at is how those numbers changed. Now, you recall when we look at things like accounts receivable, if you... Remember the equation, beginning accounts receivable plus credit sales minus collections will give you the ending accounts receivable. And bottom line, if credit sales are you lending money to your customers, you give them something you bought and paid for, so you're essentially lending them their money to buy your product, and then you collect it at a later date. If the credit sales are higher than the collections, the credit sales is money going out, collections is money coming in. So if credit sales goes up faster than collections, your accounts receivable will get higher, which means that you paid more for those additional assets. If you look at inventory, the beginning inventory plus purchases of inventory, minus the cost of goods sold, that's where you sold inventory, gives you ending inventory. Okay, so if the purchases are greater than the amount that you sold, purchases cost you money. The cost of goods sold is people buying stuff and money coming in. All right, so anytime an asset gets larger, it's because you spent more money buying the asset than you collected from selling the assets. If we look at liability, that's for assets. Anytime an asset gets larger, it's because we spent money to buy it. Anytime an asset gets smaller, it's because we sold part of the assets. Liabilities work the opposite way. If I take the beginning accounts payable, add new credit purchases, that's where somebody sells it to me on credit, minus payments for purchases, that would be me cutting them a check, that would be ending accounts payable. So if accounts payable gets larger, it's because I bought more stuff on credit than I paid for. Works just like your credit card. If your balance on your credit card was $500 this month, you, you put $250 on the credit card, 
and you sent a $50 payment in, your credit card balance would be higher. It would go from $500 up to $750 with your new purchases minus the $50 you paid off. So it'd have a balance of $700. If your credit card balance is getting larger, it's because you borrowed more money. Okay? So if we're doing the sources and uses of funds statement, what we want to pay attention to is assets get larger is a use of cash. Assets get smaller, it's a source of cash. If liabilities get larger, it's a source of cash. If they get smaller, it's a use of cash. If equity gets larger, it's a source of cash. If equity gets smaller, it's a use of cash. All right. So, one of the main sources of operating cash flow is our net income. We started with $31,510,000 of revenue. We spent money on, on, on inventory and other operating expenses. We subtracted depreciation expenses. But remember, depreciation is a non-cash expense. You don't really spend... They didn't spend $3,294,000 this year. That's just an accounting gimmick. They spent the money when they actually bought the assets. The depreciation expense is just the accounting equivalent of taking it into income over the period. So when we look at net income of 684, it's actually understated from a cash perspective. If we look at this from how much cash changed hands, all right, I actually did assuming we sell everything on cash, take in $31 million, and actually spent $20 million on the inventory that I sold, I spent $6 million on the operating expenses, salaries and stuff like that. I didn't really spend $3,294,000. I did spend $704,000 in interest, and I did spend... 420000 in income taxes. So if I actually add this all together from a cash standpoint I made 3978000 or my checking account's 3978000 higher. I could also get that number by taking net income and adding back depreciation. Okay? So when we're reconstructing our cash flow statement, that's why we start by taking in operating activities net income plus depreciation. That gives me an approximation of the amount of cash that came in for my sales. When I'm looking at changes in assets, if I go up here and look at accounts receivable, it went from 3889 to 3849 so it went down so I sold off some of those assets. The easiest way to do this is to take last year's assets and subtract this year's assets. Now that works for assets and assets only. And I can do the same thing for inventory. So the inventory went up by 658,000 which means I spent money buying inventory. The change in accounts payable, accounts payable went from three and a half million to four point eight million. Here I just subtract last year from this year. So 2017 minus 2016, because anytime a liability goes up, that's a source of cash. Alright, so I I raised 1.293 million from accounts payable. The accruals went down by 54 from 1809 to 1755. Now notice the short-term debt, I didn't forget that. I'm purposefully leaving it out because short-term debt's interest-bearing and that's a financing activity. So when we're looking at cash flow from operating activities, it's net income and add back the depreciation and then changes in current assets other than the cash because the cash is what we're trying to figure out why it went from 1284 to 1643. Changes in current liabilities that are non-interest bearing. So all of these, and I'm just going to code them up, 
I'll code this as yellow for cash flow from operating activities. And these are the accounts that I need. Okay, cash flow from investing activities is changes in long-term assets. And the only one we got is net property, plant, and equipment. Now, if I go and look at the change here, though, notice that the gross property, plant, and equipment actually went up from $41 million to $44 million, which means that I actually bought $3.1 million worth of stuff but my depreciation expenses for the year were three million two hundred ninety four thousand which I can get from the income statement so I actually bought a lot of stuff but I took even more depreciation the depreciation expense already appears here as cash flow from operating so the cash flow from investing that's simply the purchase of the gross fixed assets, uh, that's a negative cash flow because I bought them. Take last year minus this year, just like I did with accounts receivable and inventory. Okay, so we'll use a different color for this. This is Call it green is finance our investing activities. The accumulated depreciation I already got that from the change in accumulated depreciation I already recorded up here as the depreciation expense. Okay, so that does the asset side. Now I want to get my changes in financing activities. The short term debt went from 810 to 744, so I must have paid off 66,000 of it. The change in long term debt went from 6 million 16 to 5997. Just like if your credit card's lower this month than it was last month, it's because you paid some of it. The change in common stock, there is no change in common stock, it didn't go up. Now, the change in retained earnings, remember retained earnings, beginning retained earnings plus net income minus dividends. All right, if I look and see here that I know that the total change in retained earnings is 436, but I had 684 in net income. So the difference must be. I paid a $248,000 dividend. Alright, so the dividend, if I take the change in retained earnings and then subtract net income, I'll have the dividends and they're always going to be negative anyway. All right, then the last thing is the change in the treasury stock. My treasury stock got negativer, which means I bought back $800,000 more. All right, so if I take the beginning cash was 1284, that's the amount at the end of of 2016, I add 4,599,000 which was the cash flow generated by these operating activities, I subtract the $3.1 million from purchasing additional property, plant, and equipment, and I subtract the net $1,133,000 that came from my financing activities, I should show ending cash of $1,643,000. And it does, so it balanced out. That's how we look at a cash flow statement. 
I can also look in here and see that I generated about $4.6 million. A big chunk of that's depreciation, which is very similar to how Amazon was operating, if y'all have taken the, uh, the BADM 703 course. But a whole chunk of it, another $1.3 million, was changes in accounts payable. Increases in accounts payable are worrisome. That's not a good source of financing. You purchase $3 million of plant and equipment, but where'd the money come from? And the money came from largely depreciation expense and running up your accounts payable. You also took that, some of that money that you made here and you're paying off your debts and reducing your equity by giving money to shareholders. So while we've been able to track the cash flow here, that doesn't mean it's good, bad, or indifferent. What it does is give us some information about what this company is doing with the money it's raising. You raised $4.6 million from doing what you do for a living, bought a bunch of equipment, but you didn't take out mortgages on your plant and equipment. In fact, you're paying off debts uh, and you're reducing your equity here. Uh, you borrowed a bunch of money from your suppliers. So those are the types of things that we want to be able to look at and understand where the money's changing hands in a cash flow statement. And again, the court sources and uses of fund statement gives you a, 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 a way of approximating the cash flow statement using just the balance sheet and income statement for a firm.